Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and did you know that koalas have fingerprints just like humans? In fact, they're virtually indistinguishable from ours. The only other animals that have fingerprints like humans are our relatives, like chimps and gorillas. Anatomists believe that koalas may have evolved them as a way to help them grab and hold eucalyptus leaves. And that is the first of many facts about koalas I'm going to share with you today. That's right, it's a koala-only episode, a koala tacky. Some sources say the word koala may have come from an aboriginal word meaning no drink because koalas don't drink much, but some say that's a myth and the term actually has Darig origins, that's a specific aboriginal language, and means animal. Speaking of koala linguistics, there isn't a word for a group of koalas. They don't actively avoid each other, but they tend to be solitary creatures, so it's not necessary to have a word for a group. Koalas also have a scientific name, of course, and the term for their genus comes from Greek words and means pouched bear, but koalas aren't bears. They're mammals with pouches, which makes them marsupials. It also makes them adorable. So for a bit of koala history, fossils have been found of their ancestors. There were koalas very similar to the ones we know today, as far back as 26 million years ago. Just for a bit of context, our species has been around for about 250,000 years, so 1% of koala history. After the first koalas appeared, there were for a time also tiny ones, maybe just half as big, and even more recently, about 3 million years ago, there were giant koalas double the size of the current ones. But back then, Australia had mostly rainforests. In the rainforest, eucalyptus trees were relatively scarce, and yet koalas still used them for food. That actually gave koalas an evolutionary advantage, because as Australia became more dry, many other trees receded, but the eucalyptuses stayed around. By the way, we tend to think of koalas as a common Australian animal, but they actually have 10 times more wild camels in Australia than they do koalas. The reason for the strong association between koalas and Australia is partly thanks to the cartoonist Norman Lindsay. At the turn of the 20th century, he created a group of koala characters which were used to satirize parts of Australian culture. Another reason for the connection is that during World War I, a contingent of the first Australian imperial force actually brought a koala with them to Palestine as sort of a living mascot. But whatever, England had a lance corporal goat in their army in 2008. Koalas moved from tree to tree, but they revisit the same ones a lot. Their preferred group of trees is known as their home range, and despite being fairly solitary, like I mentioned before, they do share trees and home ranges with each other. But they also have a territorial side. Male koalas, which are called bucks by the way, females are does, have a scent gland that they use to mark territory. It's a brown gland on the chest that they rub on trees to inform other bucks. You know, this is my tree. You can tell from my smell. That's not the only weird thing bucks do. They have this low, loud bellow. According to experts, it's similar to an elephant rumble in pitch, which is surprising considering their size. This is meant to alarm other bucks and detract does, but for the record, koalas rarely fight each other. They also don't sweat, even though of course it gets quite hot in Australia. The reason they're often hugging trees is to stay cool. And that's why sometimes they'll even hang on to trees that don't have eucalyptus leaves. It's thought that leopards, primates, and birds Birds all use trees to stay cool, although not all via hugging. Baby koalas are known as joeys, and they're very, very cute, but they're also kind of disgusting. When they're young, they don't eat eucalyptus leaves yet, so they get nutrients from their mother's pap, which is essentially poop with a different composition, like it comes out of their mother's bottoms. And since I'm already ruining koalas for you, they're kind of mean. In 2006, the Sydney Morning Herald reported that some thieves had stolen a crocodile and traded it for illegal substances. And according to a zookeeper, they'd originally planned to take a koala, but it, quote, scratched the shit out of them. So in the end, the thieves took the crocodile because it was more agreeable than the koala. In 2014, a koala named Mundu escaped from his enclosure at the San Diego Zoo, but he ended up finding a tree above his usual home and then just spent the whole day sleeping there. The zookeepers got him back in the enclosure with some eucalyptus bribery. Here's some animals that would not be cute if they escaped from a zoo. Shark, hedgehog, aquaman, bomb with feet. Speaking of koalas now, 
napping, the animals sleep between 18 and 22 hours per day. But it's a misconception that they're always tired because eucalyptus leaves make them high. They really just need to conserve their energy due to the low nutritional content of the leaves. And they don't have great vision, so they need their large noses to seek out the best eucalyptus leaves. And they're pretty picky. There are about 600 types of eucalyptus trees in Australia, and they vary from area to area. In a given region, koalas tend to strongly prefer just one to three types, although in a pinch they'll tolerate about 50. Also, if you're in Australia, do not eat like a koala. Eucalyptus leaves are poisonous to humans. Most animals actually can't eat them either. Koalas have special microbes in their digestive tract to make their diet possible. They also have to eat a lot due to that aforementioned low nutritional content. They eat up to 2.2 pounds of leaves per day. Plus, sometimes they keep some extra in their cheeks for later. Koals can also have heterochromia, two eyes that are different colors. One was found in 2016 named Bowie. This is a very rare feature for marsupials. Unfortunately, something that isn't rare for koalas is chlamydia. An estimated 50 to 90 percent of the animals have it. Historically, koalas have had very low genetic diversity, and that's why so many of them are suffering from the same infection. It also means it's going to be harder for them to deal with climate change. And in addition to those struggles, koalas are down to about 20 percent of their original habitat, and sadly, their population has dropped by about 95 percent since the 1990s. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you that koalas do not only eat eucalyptus. They also eat dirt. As I mentioned earlier, the nutrition content of eucalyptus leaves isn't ideal, so they get some calcium from dirt, and it helps them to fully digest their eucalyptus. Thanks for watching Monofloss Video, which is made with the help of all of these lovely people, and thanks to all the koalas out there for being adorable even in hard times. As we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.